Today's spookerific review, we're going to be having a look at the Playmates Toys, Toys R Us exclusive, The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Yes, yes, I'm sure everybody remembers the Simpsons Interactive Playsets from Playmates Toys. I figure for this spooktacular year, we were going to have a look at the Toys R Us exclusives, the Treehouse of Horrors, that come with four exclusive figures available nowhere else. So, why don't we start this bone-chilling review with having a look at the diorama, and then we'll have a look at the figures that all go inside. I'm only going to measure this, because in theory this is going to be what's going to be sitting inside your shelf. All the figures are going to be sitting shorter than this. So if you want to know what clears a shelf, or whether it won't clear a shelf, let me answer that question immediately by telling you that this diorama stands at 7.2 inches in height. If centimeters is your thing, in Canada it certainly is our thing, then the diorama, just on its own, excluding all the figures, 18.4 centimeters in height. Like I said, we're going to have a look at the diorama first, and then we're going to go ahead and add the figures. Now the figures peg in, if this is new to you, the interactive sets have these little connecting plugs. Three of them here in this instance, and then corresponding buttons on the sides. Don't worry, I'll get into more all of that. I seemed as if I kind of just breezed through that. I'm not going to breeze through anything in this review, because, you know, on this channel, we get right down deep to the details. Okay, so let's have a look at the diorama first, and then, like I said, we'll bring the figures in. So the diorama, I'm glad that this is the first outing for the Springfield uh, Treehouse of Horror releases from Playmates Toys, because... This happens to also be the opening ga gateway to the Springfield Cemetery. And I think it's like over here, the Pet Cemetery. In behind here is not gates that you can open. However, you can make out that there's Kang and Kodos. Also, I believe this is a Snowball in which has been transformed into something a little bit more interesting when Bart has that mutant mind abilities that he had in that one Treehouse of Horror episode. You've got Kang and Kodos's uh, UFO there in the background, a few bats. You've got the teeth there. I think those are Grandpa's teeth. Uh, Marge from uh, Witches, was it Witches Brew? I'm trying to remember what that episode was. And a couple of zombies there on the side there as well. So it's a really neat looking diorama. It's unfortunate, though, that the diorama is cardboard because it means if you take this out every single year, which is basically what I would like to do and have yet been given the opportunity to do so, but the cardboard has to fit in this groove. It fits right here on the side, and it, fits, it continues its way down this groove here on the, on the back, and then it fits on the side here. I don't like taking things off, taking these off every single year and putting them back into place. I might even consider the idea of keeping these fully assembled and just try sort of boxing them as is. The colorings on these are very bright and beautiful, really. It's just a shame that the back here is cardboard, but that's really how it goes with diorama setups. I wouldn't expect necessarily that this would be plastic. It just means, though, you know, cardboard only has so much longevity to it. So let's have a look at some of the other things here, and then, like I said, we'll do some other stuff. I know you guys like other stuff as well. We've got the gremlin there featured on top of the tree. And down, way down below, I don't know if you can see it, there's the crusty doll, the evil crusty doll. Hey, that's what your problem was. This thing was set to evil. As for the tombstones, one says, eat my dust. And then there's an itchy and scratchy tombstone on the side there as well. Grass looks great. You've got the little pebble stones leading their way up to the gateway here and then exiting its way out. I guess this would be 
the gateway would be this way here. You, so you'd be walking through, and then this would be the cemetery on this side. Um, and then, like I said, there's the little connector points. We'll look at those in a second. Now, I want to flip this upside down. And this is something that I have noticed with Playmates toys, specifically the Simpsons Interactive sets. I don't know what batteries they use, but if you ever pick these up online, say from an eBay seller, try them immediately. I can't stress that enough. Try them immediately because what it is, something about their batteries, Playmates uses these really cheap batteries when it comes to these sets. A lot of the ones that I've gotten have late. And I, immediately opening this up, I realized that there's all this corrosion of battery leakage on the interior there. It so happens also as well that this one had the same problem. It didn't work right away. I opened it up and sure enough, there was battery leaking all inside there or had previously leaked because this is technically my second time. Oh, I just gave it away. My second Playmates playset. I sold the initial ones and then later I'm like, why did I sell those? I really quite like them. So double check your batteries and immediately replace them. And then afterwards, if you ever pack these away, you might want to take the batteries out completely as well, which is what I'm going to do. And then the last thing we have is a display, an off, and a demo. This is something also you want to pay attention to because if it is on demo, it's not going to cycle through all the phrases. And I find that the connectivity on some of the figures don't work perfectly on demo. And that, in a nutshell, is the playset. Now, as for the characters that come included with this, you get four of them and they're exclusive only to this interactive setup. We'll start our way this way. Actually, you know what? We're going to start our way this way and we'll work our way through. Uh, we do have Homer Kong, and it's rather actually interesting about Homer Kong is the back of the box. Now, somebody is going to be immediately rewinding to the beginning of this this video review. The big the box, the back of the box actually has Homer Kong as brown, not gray. He should have actually been gray, as he is right here, because it's a black and white picture. Homer Kong looks decent enough. Um, part of me feels like he should have actually had something in his hands, like a smaller Marge Simpson. Now, I checked the packaging. As far as I know, he, he, he didn't come with a smaller Marge. He probably should have, because his hand fits perfectly for a Marge that should have fat, uh, fit inside the hand there, but he doesn't come with that. Like I said, he does look good. Um, I find he's one of the more awkward characters to fit on the diorama. Um, here's the way that the connector points work. It kind of looks like an old audio tape, doesn't it? And there's these prongs on either end. It's not so much the connector point that's the issue. It's these clips on the side that usually make things such a problem. Plugging him into place. I'll show you guys that in a second. Uh, Homer Kong, though, again, all black and white, as he should be. He has mild posability, and really all of these figures have mild posability. Their heads rotate. So Homer's rotates, his arms rotate. And this is sort of the problem that you have with a lot of these. The legs move, but if you move them off of the flat footing that they have, they're not gonna plug into the connector points. So even though he does have posability here on both legs, you're really not gonna wanna move them because you're gonna wanna keep them flat, especially Homer, especially. He is one of the hardest of the figures to stand properly because you have to get his feet exactly right. Moving it just slightly, throws off his balance. So there's Homer. I'm going to put him right there. And moving along, we have Bart the Fly. This is, as far as I know, the exact same Bart figure. I don't think they've done differently anything to the body other than changing out the new head. The head here is, of course, Bart as the Fly, believing is somehow that he's going to have super abilities when merging himself with the Fly. Not so much. Instead, he's just sort of going... Um, again, he doesn't have anything that he comes included with. His hands sort of gripping, but really, he's coming from the original Bart Simpson figure that would have had accessories, perhaps like a skateboard and whatnot. So this guy doesn't really come with anything. Other than, really, Devil Flanders, none of the figures come with any sort of accessories at all. Coloring is minimal on this. Favoring it instead, it looks like just plastic molding than anything else. Perhaps like the eyes have been painted, but everything else looks like it's just been molded plastic. The eyes are a nice touch. He does look like he does from the in the actual episode. And his post Billy, his head rotates, arms rotate, 
and uh, he does have a waist swivel. And that's it. So there's Bart the Fly. Probably not my favorite. He may very well be my least favorite from this set. One of my personal favorites, though, is uh, Dracula Burns. Now, this one is taken from uh, Bart Simpson's Dracula, I believe, was the episode in which the Simpsons had to go to his um, his castle, and it was it was quite a fun, obviously a funny episode. Everybody remember to wash their necks. I did. <laughs> um, of course, uh, Mr. Burns, with a quite rather ridiculous hair sculpt or hair style, if you will. Again, I don't really have the original Mr. Burns. I really would like to go back and start collecting the interactive Simpsons sets. Like, I really need something else to be collecting. But I think the head sculpt is generally pretty much the same as the one we got before, other than just this heart-shaped hair that's on the top of Mr. Burns. Of course, he's wearing a really rather long robe, concealing also for the fact that he's got the connector points on the underside. It sort of does limit, then, what you can do with the figure. Um, all the things you can really do with him is move his hands, you can move his head. I mean, you could have an insatiable sort of pose on his hands where it's up by his mouth. Excellent fresh young victims for my ever-growing army of the undead. Ah, sorry, you forgot to take your finger off the button. Oh, son of a... There is Mr. Burns as Dracula. And last but certainly not least, I say last, certainly not least, my personal favorite from the set, I would say, is Devil Flanders. Of course, Homer sells his soul for a dev uh, for a donut, and it was scrum diddly umptious. And of course, he has to go on trial, and Flanders is competing for Homer's soul. Now, Flanders is one of the only figures that comes with an accessory. He comes with his little pitchfork here, which is a soft plastic. It fits very easily in his hand, and it's not going to go anywhere. His glasses, on the other hand, are a rather different story altogether. They don't really stay on his face. Um, often, if you bang the figure by mistake, and now, of course, it's not doing it, the glasses do are prone to falling off. Still a classic look for Flanders, now incorporating some horns on his head. He's got the very long, open... It's funny that they never gave him a... I don't think they gave him a muscular top, a muscular uh, chest, as, of course, he did uh, in Streetcar Named Desire. Streetcar Named Marge, I think, was the episode. Uh, he does have posability. It's sort of one of those awkward posable things where rotating the arms up, this one specifically, it may be sounding like he's trying to say, huh? Huh? So instead, you really want to kind of keep the arm against resting against the side of his waist. The arm, other arm moves up. Um, there is no posability in the wrists. And uh, he doesn't have waist articulation either. His little hooved legs are soft plastic. But uh, luckily, it doesn't mean that the figure is going to have problems standing. Oh, and also, we can't forget his tail, um, which doesn't really quite look like it's got posability. It's just bending it is, if anything, is just bending the plastic. So there are your four figures that come included. Now, to get them on the play sets, I'm just going to grab the play set right here. We'll obviously want to make sure that we switch it from demo to display. And then we can go ahead and connect the figures. Easier said than done. I'm going to move these right over here. As we had already looked at before, there are three connector points, which means, unfortunately, if you do your math correctly, you're omitting one of these when it comes to displaying options. If I can manage to try to get Homer Kong on there, usually Homer Kong goes on there, uh, Burns goes on there, and Flanders goes on there. I think the only one I don't normally put on there is fly Bart, and I usually just put him in the background there because I don't find him as interesting of a character. But the thing with these is, and the big sell that Playmates had these going for back in their day, and Simpsons were all the rage back in the day when they were doing these play sets, is that you take these figures and see how, once again, you've got those two connectors on either side, and then you've got this gold cell in the middle. What you're supposed to be able to do is take the figure, and line it up over top of these and clip them into place. I say what you're supposed to do because often at times, every person I think that's ever owned one of these Simpsons sets does the exact same thing. They look at the figure, they kind of tilt it up and they try their best to line everything up. Once that's in place, then you have the option of pressing the button. Now you know right off the bat, and maybe 
if Lady Lux smiles down on me, she's, she's actually going to show me an example of this, and I can show you guys an example of this. If you put it on wrong, it will usually sound a sound that doesn't sound anything like the characters, and you know that you've, you haven't put it on correctly. If it does put in place correctly, it does actually cycle a sound relative to that character. And then from there, you just press the button again. And it will change the different audio clips attached to that toy. Now, say you take this one off. And we're going to put... Dracula burns on there again. It's hard because you're line. You have to kind of look it up, kind of tilt up at the figure's feet to line it up correctly to the stand. Not funny. And you can connect this one in place. This was probably the one of the worst examples I could have used because it does, in the process of it, hide his button. <laughs> and this one tells you that nothing is connected to it, which would then pair to this one right here. <laughs> so let's go ahead, plug Mr. Burns at the back should have realized that it would have covered over the button. There we go. Plugging him into place, pressing the button. Simpson, eh? Excellent. Not placed. Simpson, eh? Excellent. Not placed. You're fired. Simpson, eh? Excellent. We'll use maybe this back one as the as the example. I really started here, but should have started in the middle. So we take that one off. Now, re remembering that was where we had Mr. Burns, we just did it a few seconds ago. Plug that one into place. And just try that again. So like this one here. For some reason, again, some of them. There we go. Now, even though it was the same stand as what we had uh, Mr. Burns, we now have the audio clips. Keep trying to talk around the audio. We have the audio clips then of uh, Fly Bart. And then we'll grab Mr. Well, we'll grab Mr. Burns. Let's grab Flanders. Peg Flanders into place. Now Flanders is weird because his feet, the way it goes, it's going in the opposite direction. So you want to have it over here or one that's straight. If you have it this way, Flanders, of course, is going to be facing the wrong way. So we're just going to line him up. All right, Simpson, you get your soul back. I hold here a contract between myself and one Homer Simpson. Pledging me his soul for a donut. <laughs> it's always the one you least suspect. Silence. Okay, so we'll keep him in place. Now let's have the fun task. You know what we'll take, Mr. Burns. We'll put him in the back again. He's usually the place where it's usually the place where I end up putting him. Put him right there. Simpson, eh? There we go. Excellent. And then the hardest one of the three is getting Homer Kong in place. It's something about his feet. I may have to tip this up again. There we go. And just place that in place, line it up as best we can. And it's his it's his feet that are, like I said, the hardest of the three to get plugged into place. And don't quite. There we go. No, almost. Almost. Blessed. Now, okay, so we'll just take. We'll take Fly Bart and we'll put him in there instead. Simpson, eh? You can see. You can see the frustrations that come with trying to connect these in place. Once, however. Once, however, you get enough of them in place, they sort of then start cycling through each of the characters. Not placed. All right, there Simpson, you get your soul back. Uh, what I would have liked to have done is put Homer here and then put Fly Bart in the background. It is funny, though, that they give you three connector points, but only four figures to work with. So you have to sort of mix and match them. Sometimes I even take, Simpson, eh? Excellent. take Mr. Burns off, take out Fly Bart, take off Flanders, and see if I can get Homer Kong in the back here. 
his again he is the hardest to get in because he's so big now he's he really should be over here but is <laughs> there we go I don't know why it didn't work before go ahead and put mr. burns back in place Ooh, okay managed to get all the figures in place except for fly Bart's fly Bart there just isn't another connector point for him so I usually just have him relegated behind the tombstones but the largest of the figures Homer Kong Dracula Burns Devil Flanders I managed to get all in place Homer is the hardest by far to get into place because his feet don't line up Flanders had the problem that his feet go the opposite way at least the connector point goes the opposite way but Homer's is just the most trickiest to get actually in place. But to show you that I did get all of them in place, let's cycle through the sound effects. And then Dracula burns. Not placed. You're fired. Simpson, eh? Excellent. And Devil Flanders. <laughs> it's always the one you least suspect. Silence! I hold here a contract between myself and one Homer Simpson, pledging me his soul for a donut. Hopefully, to make a long story short, my personal attachment to these sets came with a really good friend of mine that I would visit every once in a while on the weekend. He had collected and amassed all of the interactive playsets that Playmates had ever released, even the very elusive Main Street playset, which I might have even picked him up for Christmas time. So I used to go to over his house, I used to change out the characters and move them to different playsets, and I would be able to hear the various audio clips attached to those characters. Not all the sets appealed to me. In fact, the ones that stood out for me as my personal favorites were the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Uh, Playmates Toys had only released four of them, and making them also Toys R Us exclusives made picking them up a little bit trickier. By this point, they'd already circulated their way out, and again, I only could live vicariously through my friend. So when I picked these up for myself, I picked up all four of them, and I might have done reviews on all four of them on this channel a long time ago, and then ultimately sold them. Don't ask me why I sold them. I probably just thought I didn't need them anymore. But longing set in real quick. And I thought to myself, you know what? For Halloween and Halloween alone, these would be fun to put out every single year. So I went back to eBay and where I was originally, I picked up the sets again. The sets have stayed relatively affordable. Generally, you can pick up most of these for about $25 to $40. The ones that are the most expensive is the Kang and Kodos set, which I think it's because people just like Kang and Kodos, and that was the only time that Playmates had ever released those two characters. So if you ever are interested in picking these up for yourself, you should be able to get them at still a relatively affordable price. Just take my heatings to call. Um, just don't sell them. That's, that's what I would just, yeah, don't sell them. Because you're going to sell them, and you're going to regret it later. And you don't want to you don't want to re regret that later. Either way, today's spooktacular review, a throwback, if you will. We were going back and once again having a look at the Playmates toys. These were the interactive play sets, specifically Treehouse of Horror, specifically the first one. And not the last, because we're gonna go back and have a look at the rest of them for this spot Tober 2018. Even though we're kind of getting under the wire, we're getting near the end of October, but we're still gonna bang through a whole bunch of these videos anyways, because I like Halloween and it's my channel, and I, I can do what I want. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what exactly are you waiting for? There's gonna be, like I said, a whole bunch of other spooktacular spooky spots coming to this channel, even though it's coming very close to October, it doesn't matter. I wouldn't necessarily push spooky spots way into January. I think that might be a little over the top, but they may overlap themselves a little bit into November. So if this is sort of your thing and something that you like coming to this channel for every single October, there's going to still be a little bit more. And I hope also that you're not just coming to this channel during October, because there's a whole lot of rest of content happening all across the remainder of the year. Make sure as well you swing over to the homepage and check out some of those videos that I've posted. 
there may be a good chance that it, I might have posted something that you may have missed out on. The best way to figure out what you may have missed out on is checking out those videos on the home page. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. If you manage to pick up any of these, by the way, by yourself or for yourself, let me know down below what you think of them. Do you still have them or have you sold them? Silly, silly, silly. You should never sell these. You'll kick yourself later. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.